All right, welcome back to Thursdays with me. To do some more parallelism stuff, we uh, actually didn't go through too many problems last time because we had preliminary discussion for a while, but I've got some more problems for you. Just remember what parallelism means. It means making things look like each other and not not look like each other. So swimming, running, better than swimming and to run. The, the one thing to notice about this is that you do not have to formulate what parallelism should look like. You don't have to do that. And it's important because there's all sorts of subtleties that you don't need to master. I mean, you, you just have to compare choices against other choices and make a decision accordingly. You, again, I'm saying a thousand times in a row, but you do not have to determine how to write the sentence. So just keep that in mind. Um, we got to show you the copyright notice again. There you go. All the problems on today's boards are from the free GMAT crap. And again, when you are submitting topics, make sure that you do not submit topics from the paid GMAT prep. Please don't do it. Okay, a um, couple of boards that we did last time. This is a screen from the last week's session. There's a lot of stuff on it, but just wanted to make sure that this difference. If you were here last week for this discussion, give me a smiley face. Give me the blue face in the same area if you weren't here last week. Okay, there's enough of you who weren't. All right, so just to make sure we're on the same page with this, notice you have two pairs of sentences on this page. And the first sentence has exactly the same grammar structure as the third one does. And the second sentence has exactly the same grammar structure as the fourth one does. But of these two, the second one is correct and the first one is wrong. And of these two, number three is correct, number four is wrong. So, I mean, the explanations are on the board. I don't know why they had these strange, strange symbols next to them, but these are just supposed to be dashes. Um, hmm. These are supposed to be dashes. Let me convert these up here into dashes. Sorry about that. Okay. That should all look better now. There we go. Okay, um, the visual presentation should be fixed. Notice the, the first and third sentences here have identical grammar. That first sentence is wrong and the third sentence is right. Why? Who can tell me in the chat box? How is it possible that this sentence could be incorrect but this sentence could be correct, even though it has the same structure. How is that possible? Okay, it's what Ian said that's the modifier, but how do you know that? Where, why shouldn't gulping also be a modifier? Aha, you're looking at the meaning of the sentence. Yeah. I mean, again, don't forget this. This is thing number one about sentence correction. The first step of every problem all the time needs to be what is the intended meaning, which means, like, what is the sentence supposed to be communicating? So this sentence here is actually communicating. Uh, those, are, those look like weird symbols, too. Let's fix that. Dash. Oops. Sorry. I didn't mean to erase that line. 
Let me put that line back. Eat lunch, stop drinks, and stop sleep. Okay. Like this sentence is actually describing three different things that I did. All right. At number one, I ate lunch. Number two, I drank a bunch of drinks. Number three, I fell asleep. You know, genuinely three different things. If this was a PowerPoint, I could actually put these on a PowerPoint with three bullets or three dashes, or I could call them A, B, C, or one, two, three. Give me a smiley face if that makes sense. Versus this sentence up here, this is absolutely not one, two, three, or A, B, C, or bullet, bullet, bullet. Like this sentence is, if it was number one, it would be like one A, B. It would not be one, two, three. You would indent on a slide. And then these two things would be the same kind of bullet point, but they would not be parallel to the first one. So, and I mean, remember, this is a skill that is not, you don't have to be taught this skill. Like, you just kind of know when you're supposed to indent stuff and when you're not. So, you, that, that's how you decide whether things should or should not be parallel. It's when you first learn to make bullet points or things like that, nobody had to tell you, okay, well, now you should indent that. Like, th that's just intuition. So, but this doesn't make sense as three different things. It makes perfect sense as a comma ing modifier, because remember the purpose of comma ing modifiers is to actually describe the action that comes before them. So give me a smiley face if that distinction makes sense. If you don't understand the comma ing modifiers themselves, there are study halls on that, and that's also covered in our books. So the, the main point that you got to know about that is that the comma ing describes the action that comes before it. And we'll have some more specifics on that here in a moment. But OK, so that's the difference there. So make sure that you do this, because you have to figure this out before you decide what is right and what is wrong. Like if you don't already know that this is supposed to be one indent A, B, whereas this one is actually one, two, three. If you don't know that, then you cannot make this decision. Because if you were just looking at pure mechanics, then all four of them are mechanically sound. But the first and fourth ones don't convey the right idea. So, OK. Let's do a problem. Let me pick one for me. Let's see. How about this problem right here? Don't forget where don't forget where the answers to multiple choice questions are found. There's the problem. Please do not pick multiple choice answers in the chat. Okay, give you a little bit of time to do that. Okay. All right. You know, some of you still have an answer to this thing, but you should have an answer to this thing by now. Still about six of you who don't. I remember the way this works. Also, it's worth mentioning that time management on this test is not, it's not like let's count minutes and seconds, which is also why there's not a timer on the screen. Because time management is just look are you stuck or are you not stuck? 
And if you are stuck, you just don't keep staring at the board. That's pretty much the full extent of what time management is, really, the full extent of it, I swear. Okay, um, let's talk about it. And then this is a unit on parallel structures, which is probably why, I mean, a lot of you guys have the right answer to this, whereas people don't usually do as well as this group. Um, that might just mean that you guys are really good. But it's probably because we told you in advance that something should be parallel to something else. Like, wh which things should be parallel? Okay, I'm in the chat box. Let me know. Yeah, they found some evidence and they concluded some stuff from that evidence. And like sequ sequential actions, generally speaking, as long as they are actions of roughly the same priority level, like sequences of actions usually take parallel structures. So here, I mean, we're going to get more into that in a second because there are some things that are not sequences of actions that are worth talking about here. But they, notice the have actually applies to both of these parts. Found and concluded, there, there should be an and in between those. Notice when you read the original, like the original has this as comma concluding, which is incorrect. So remember step one of every sentence correction problem that was ever made is what is the intended meaning? And when you see this, you should notice that these are sequential, so they should be parallel even though they are not. It makes no difference that the original sentence expresses these not in parallel, even though these are in parallel in the original. They should be. Let me smiley face if that concept makes sense. Because notice, I mean, this is I, I haven't noticed as much of it on the, as much of this on the forum lately, which is good. But a lot of people on our forum historically have they've operated under the assumption that they have to keep the meaning of the original sentence, which is totally not true. I mean, if, if the original sentence suggests the wrong meaning, then you have to change it. So that's the point. But the deal is that regardless of whether the original is correct or incorrect, you should, you should still be able to look at it and determine what the meaning is supposed to be, even if it is wrong. It's, you know, it's like when you read emails from a colleague who doesn't write English very well. You can still usually discern their meaning, always discern their meaning. Like you're not going to have trouble telling what they're trying to communicate. So these are, these are things. You want to have an and in between them that makes A and B incorrect. And we do not want comma ing. More on that in a second. So these are out. Now, B and C and D, they have found signs and have concluded. That also works. You can either, and so does concluded. So let me let me figure out how I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this with underlines. Like E is parallel because concluded and found. But C and D, C is parallel because have concluded is parallel to have found. So you're matching the green underlines. And then D is parallel too because, I mean, you have this unnecessary they. 
which should make you suspicious of choice D. But it's also parallel. So all of these things, all of these things are parallel. Now give me a smiley face if you see that. If it's D, it's the two purple things that are parallel. If it's C, it's the two green things that are parallel. And if it's E, it's the two blue things. Okay. So deciding among these, what's the, what is this supposed to be telling us? Like what's the quantitative comparison? The crust holds what? The intended meaning, like what are we trying to say about the amount of water in the crust of Mars? Therefore, is not the focus right now. You could look at that too. But what I'm looking at for the moment, at least, is this, this, and this. Yeah, the, the deal is, so there's two ways that you can eliminate this. There's one way that you can eliminate it, which is just idioms, and we're going to get to that in a second. But what I also want you to notice, because this is not a small thing, and if you think that what I'm going to say now is a small thing, then that probably means that you're not paying enough attention to meaning of stuff, and you might be paying too much attention to mechanics. Like if I say, okay, um, parking in some city can cost up to $50 a day in San Francisco. I mean, it could, I guess it can cost me more than that, but okay, like this sentence is a normal sentence that is correct, right? Give me a smiley face if that makes sense to you. Like there's a maximum cost of $50 a day. It could be less. Now, what if I wrote, what if I wrote this? Do you guys see what the problem is there? Can anybody explain in the chat box? Why is it a bad sentence? It, it's not really that it's nonsense. It's because it's not nonsense. But it's, I, I think you guys are getting at the right idea. We're just not quite choosing the right word. It's not really redundant either because you're, or more, it definitely does not mean the same thing as up to. Yeah, right? Like if you, the problem with this, which, I, which I'm pretty sure is the idea that all of you are trying to get at here, the problem is that this could be literally any amount of money at all because up to 50 or more means like, I mean, that, that could be $2,000, guys. Like this could be literally any amount of money. So it's it's not really that it's nonsense. It's just that it's not, there's no it doesn't say anything. This is like saying I could be as old as 40 or even older. Well, I could be any age, guys. Right? I mean, smiley face. That makes sense. Because literally every dollar amount is either up to 50 or more than 50. I mean, at every single dollar amount. And I mean, you, you know that that's not the intended meaning because nobody would say that. Nobody would be like, parking here is going to cost some number of dollars. I mean, you have to try to communicate something. So this is incorrect for, D is incorrect for that reason. This is just, it's not total nonsense, but it's meaningless and it's clearly not supposed to be what you communicate. Now, C and D, there's an easier way to eliminate those two, which is just to use idioms. Like, you, you probably know that more goes with than and doesn't go with as. And you probably know that as much goes with as and not with more and not with than.
as much than nope as much as so I mean you, I, these are things that everybody should know after a certain amount of exposure to English so and the only one of those three that has paired those correctly is C like as much as is good as much than like the way that you would have to write D if it meant something would be as much as or more than because you have to have the as there. Give me a smiley if that makes sense. Like the way they have this now, you're trying to use the word than for both of these, and that's not, you can't do that. And then E is just more as, no, no, not a thing. But like five of you guys pick E, so more as. Uh, uh. Make sure they're not getting that kind of thing under your nose. If you didn't notice this, what that probably means is just that you are not focusing enough on single a, a single thing at a time. Like you might just be looking at a bunch of words and trying to process all the words at once. Make sure you don't do it. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. So, any questions about this stuff? The placement of therefore is not really an issue in any of these. Like it's. The only sort of placement issue that you guys are going to have to be overly concerned with is going to be modifiers being placed close to stuff that they modify. But things like therefore, which, you know, are modifying entire sentences, you don't need to worry about the nuances of where to place those kinds of things. So, like, if you're modifying a noun, then if you see modifiers in different places, you eliminate the ones that are too far away from the noun, and you keep the ones that are close to the noun. But that's because that's, like, one word, and so you can actually say this is too far away from that one word, and this isn't. But, like, therefore, is describing the entire conclusion that the crust, blah, 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 blah. So, this placement is not a thing that you're worried about. Any questions about this? Okay. Um, there, there's one. There's one more thing about this problem that I wanted to make sure you guys understand. Which, again, I think that the reason you guys did so well on it is because this is a parallelism unit, but. Why is comma ing incorrect? Um, the question in the chat box, let me put it on the board. Just in case anyone. Okay. Here's the question. Um, there's not really a such thing as testing things together. I mean, if you're thinking about this as together, that's the wrong way to think about it. Because remember the entire key to solving sentence correction problems is to not think of things together. Like in this problem, the as much as more than that idiom, you don't, you don't need to think about it. Like thinking about parallel structures will not help you when you consider that. And likewise, when you think about parallel structures, that has nothing whatsoever to do with the idiom. I mean, those are two completely separate issues, and you should be thinking about exactly one of them at a time and ignoring the other one. So, I mean, this is a very big deal because if you think that that is a thing, then that is the worst possible thing you could do on these problems. There is no together. These are just separate issues. So if they appear in the same problem, that doesn't that doesn't affect anything. It's the same as appearing in two different problems. So let me know if that makes sense. I mean, again, not, not exaggerating. That is the single most important thing about solving these problems is isolating stuff. 
at least 90% of the challenge in sentence correction. Because, I mean, the mistakes in these problems are not subtle or hard to understand. I mean, like, you guys know that you can't write more ads. And you guys know that, you know, swimming into run versus swimming and running. I mean, these are not subtle, small things. But it, the challenge is ignoring all the other stuff so that you can actually pay attention to them. Okay. Question here. I noticed that some of you are typing, so I'll be ready to field those questions at some point. Why is comma ing wrong here? Like, if someone wrote concluding modifies the action, if that's true, then it would not be wrong. If that's true, then it would be correct. Like, versus, let me give you another sentence. Consider this sentence. Um, scientists have found signs that moving water change the chemical makeup of the surface of Mars in recent eras, comma, proving that the planet's surface has not always been dry. Okay, this sentence is correct. I mean, again, this, this decision was probably, if you knew that today was parallel structure day, then you could circumvent this decision by just realizing that, well, Ron picked this problem for parallelism, so there must be parallel things. But just make sure that you understand this. Like, we have found signs, there's your action, comma, proving. Think about the difference there. Oh, well, thanks. Appreciate that. Here are two simpler examples of the same thing. So I wrote, let me actually give you four, let me give you two pairs of examples. I'm not going to say them while I type them, that way it'll be faster. Okay, versus... Okay. In fact, let me take you to the next page and have you vote on them. Okay. Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to number these, and then you're going to vote. Let me tell you how we're going to vote. In the multiple choice area, give me give me A in the multiple choice area if you think that number one and number three are correct. Give me B if you think that number one and number four are correct. Give me C if you think that number two and number three are correct. And give me D if you think that number two and number four are correct. Okay, let's talk about it. I mean, a lot of you guys pick D, but I mean, 
if it was D, if it was A or D, then I, I wouldn't have given you two sets of examples. Like if they worked the same way, I would have just given you one pair so that I didn't waste your time. They're different. Um, let's talk about it. So remember in this problem, we, we mentioned this. Sequences of actions are normally in parallel, but legitimately if they are sequences. Like what that means is they have to actually be sequences, i.e. they have to not be things that are the same thing. They have to actually be sequential, like two points on a timeline. One is later than the other. So like this, this pair right here, is legitimately a sequence of actions. Your smiley face, if that makes sense. Like if you put these things in a timeline, these are two points on a timeline. So, I mean, in fact, they would be an hour apart. But as long as they are two points, it doesn't make any difference if they are an hour apart or if they are like a few moments apart. So, you get this, you got that, there's an hour interval between those. This is where they're struck by a bus, and this is where they die. The deal is this is non zero time. I have absolutely no idea what that time is supposed to mean. Um, okay, so whereas the first thing is not a sequence, the first thing we're talking about the same thing twice. Um, what this thing is being weird. Okay, there we go. Sorry. I mean, this is not a sequence of actions. Like, if you were going to put these things on a timeline, these things would be the same point on the timeline. These are two descriptions of exactly the same event. So, um, sorry about that little delay. This is. This is not a sequence of events. Give me a smiley face, if that makes sense. This is two descriptions of exactly the same event at exactly the same time. Okay, there's at least one of the blue phase. If you imagine putting these on a literal timeline, like imagine that you were going to graph this on a timeline. You could not possibly make this two points. This would be one point on a timeline. It would not be two and it could not be two because these things don't happen at different times. It's instantly, meaning it's struck by a bus, died, the same. It's exactly the same event at exactly the same time. Like there's no conceivable way to represent this as two points separated by non-zero time. Give me a smiley face if that makes sense. Especially if you gave me the other face the first time. Okay, cool. So yeah, if it's this, then you can't put these things in parallel because they're not parallel things. Like parallel things have to be separate things. They can't be the same thing twice. If you're saying two things about the same event, it means that one of them is going to be describing the other one. So this is going to be a modifier. So you don't, putting these in parallel is incorrect if you have this kind of situation. Parallel structure is wrong if 
if you have two descriptions of exactly the same event at exactly the same time. So struck and died is incorrect because those are not two things. In this instance, you actually want to have comma dying as a description of struck by a bus. Whereas in number in the green pair, this is a modifier would be nonsense because these are different things. So this, you actually want to have this and that. Okay, so number, this would be, this is one that makes sense. Number three doesn't make sense because comma dying does not describe this other event. So number one is correct and number four is correct. Give me a smiley if that makes sense. All right, so back to this. The same thing explains this distinction between these two sentences. Because when you find signs of water, that is, that in and of itself is proof that the planet has not always been dry. I mean, if you find, like, there's no further action there. Like, finding evidence of water is proof that the planet has not always been dry. So, therefore, these, these are two descriptions of the same thing. Smiley, if that makes sense. So these should not these should not and cannot be parallel. It, it is incorrect to use parallel structure for this bottom sentence. Because one of them is actually a modifier of the other one. Whereas in this original sentence that's not true, right? I mean you find signs of water and then Drawing conclusions about quantitative comparisons, that's not exactly the same thing. Like they, they would have to actually have processed these data and then thought about them and then, like, this would be two points on a timeline. First they found the data, then they, like, thought about it or crunched some numbers or did some sort of rational thought process, after which they drew this conclusion. So it would be incorrect to make a modifier for this. And you want to, it's a sequence of actions, so you want to put it in parallel. Any questions? Okay. Cool. Good. Also, the last thing I wanted to mention is there are a lot of people on the forum who seem to think that if you have any two past events, then you have to put the earlier one in the like had verb the tense, and you have to put the later one in the past tense. That that's, that's totally not true. Like if you have a sequence of things, then they're pretty much going to be in the same tense, unless there's a very good reason for them not to be. Like for example, devoured lunch, gulp, drink, spell, sleep. Those are all in the normal past tense. If you if you tried putting one of these earlier actions as had devoured or had gulped, it would be incorrect. So just realize that when you have a sequence of past events, it's pretty much going to be past, 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 especially if they're parallel. So um, when when you have things that are happening at the same time, yeah, because one of them is going to be a description of the other one. This is really just understanding how comma ing works, but this is a modifier of that event. So, and if you do have two descriptions that are simultaneous of exactly the same thing, then one of them should be describing the other one, or at least should be some sort of subsidiary to the other one. So, you don't have to memorize that separately. It's really just knowing what comma ing is. It's more knowing that parallelism is incorrect in a situation like that. If you say I did X and did Y, you are implying that X and Y are different, is the point. And if you think about bullet points in PowerPoint or something, you, you realize that you already know that. You just don't forget it for these problems, is basically the point. Okay, let's do another problem. Okay, that's really big, I didn't mean to sign it. 
There you go. You know where the multiple choice answers are found. That just as reinforcement. Those are found here. Go for it. Okay, should probably have an answer to this pretty soon. I mean, this one's longer than others, so you might take a little bit longer to process it. I'll give you another 20 or 30 seconds. But remember that by telling you there's parallelism, kind of cheating here, so it should take you less time than otherwise. Okay, let's talk about it. What things should be parallel? There's a couple of pairs. Can anybody tell me in the chat box? Can anybody name a couple of things that should be parallel to each other? Okay, the first pair is have been blind and have never seen anyone gesture because those are two descriptions of the people and they are separate. I mean, they're related to each other, but they are not the same thing. Like seeing someone gesture is not seeing people gesture is not the same as being blind. So, thus, also is an important relationship word there. But people who have been blind for, from birth and thus have never seen anyone gesture, although those are parallel in all five. Like all five choices say have never seen anyone gesture. So you should notice that, but it's not going to help you eliminate anything. What else? And make hand motions. So these people do two things. One of those things is that they make hand motions. When do they make hand motions? Do they make them all the time? They make them just when they are speaking. So when speaking, not randomly, when speaking, they make hand motions. And then they will gesture is not underlined. They will gesture when conversing with another blind person. I mean, the point is that you, you, these modifiers do need to be roped into those parallel structures because they're important. I mean, if you, this, the when speaking is part of that, it, co it corresponds to when conversing. You have to qualify both of these. Like if you just, if you, if the first parallel part were just they make hand gestures at random, that would be wrong. So when speaking, these individuals 
make hand motions with certain restrictions or under certain circumstances. And also that they will gesture when conversing. Those things should be parallel. Now, I mean, let's let's talk about what happens with that. The thing I just underlined versus not having that there. So you A and D versus B, C, and E. Sometimes it's okay to do it both ways. But let's look at B or C or E. I mean, let's look at what happens if you just have and here. Like if you consider, say, E, that would mean the second parallel structure would be they will gesture, blah, 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 blah. What's the, if you, if you interpret it that way, what's the first parallel structure? Where does the first parallel structure start? Yeah, it's going to start with individuals. That's a problem because when speaking is excluded from that. And so then you get nonsense. Because this is not something that is generically true. Like, in fact, if, if you write the sentence like E or also like B or C, you're actually saying that when speaking applies to all of this. It, it applies to individuals because when speaking, comma, parallel structure. So you would be saying that when speaking also is talking about this. I mean, conversing with another blind person, when speaking, when conversing, that's not, you, you can't, that's a redundant description. You can't use this to describe something that's already there. There are other ways you can eliminate these choices too. I mean, that, that seems if that seems like a lot of consideration, we're going to look at other things in the set. But these are goners. As opposed to using that, if you have that, let's talk about where the parallel structures are now. If you have and that, they will blah 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 blah. I mean, we can just we can just mark up the original. That's that entire thing, starting with that, is the second parallel structure. And so the first parallel structure goes all the way back to the first instance of that, which is exactly what we want to do. Research has shown that modifier blah, 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 and that something else is also true. So this is precisely the parallel structure that we want. So A and D do that correctly. The other choices don't. Give me a smiley face if that makes sense. As far as other things, we'll get there in a second. First, let's look at other parallel structures. The description of how they make hand motions when they talk, there, there's two ways that they do that, although those are also the same way in all five choices. Like, they make them just as frequently as people who are not blind. and also in the same way as sighted people. What you should notice about this, this is a perfect example of why you should not waste your time trying to formulate 
parallel structures because you can't, you might not love, you might think that you don't love this because they're not perfectly grammatically matched up or whatever. Like this is just as adverb and there's no adverb here. But there's, that's because there's no adverb that means in the same way. I mean, that's, or there's no, you can't write these in a way that matches each other. So this is as good as you can get. If you had to write the sentence, you would have to have a lot of experience with that to be able to decide what is as good as I can get. But you don't have to, right? Like, you just have to look at the choices. And if there's nothing more parallel, then you eliminate it. You don't eliminate it. If there is, then you do eliminate it. Smiley face at that point makes sense. Like a lot of parallelism is grammatically, it's approximate parallelism because just because you cannot write those things in exactly the same way every time. I mean, same sort of thing with they will gesture and they make hand motions. Like this doesn't say will make. So you might be wondering about that too. But notice that all five choices just say make. None of them say will make, so this is a non-issue. What's going on there is the future thing, like the will, this is not actually the future tense. This is, this is just a way of expressing that something is surprising or unexpected or something. But you don't have to know that and they have specifically constructed the problem so that that is a non-issue. They'll, they'll do that. They'll do that in general with nuances. You will, you will not have to know small nuances. But you can notice them and look into them. But just, you, it's not going to depend on that. So. Like they will gesture even when they talk to another blind person is kind of surprising because, you know, the other blind person is not going to see their gestures. But it's so hardwired that they still do it. It's a pretty surprising fact. Okay. Now as far as these other choices go. What's the main sentence? This is part of step one. It's especially important when you have a sentence that is this long. Like remember that there's still going to be a core sentence that expresses the main idea. It's still going to be a thing. And, and you need to figure this out before you look at the answer choices, guys. What's the core sentence? In other words, what's the main idea being conveyed? When, okay, so research has shown that you can actually ignore that kind of thing. If, if you were doing a formal grammar analysis, it would be troublesome, but my friend said that research has shown that some people believe that those things, you, you can eliminate those things and the sentence works the same way. Like, or, you know, you, you can also put that in front of any sentence. Research has shown that you could also put that in front of any sentence. Look, look, I did that. So you can, you can totally ignore, but maybe you can't because there are two things. But what, what has research shown? Research has shown that people, my point being that this does not affect whether it is a sentence or not, if that was unclear. Like if you knock this purple part off of a sentence, you will still have a sentence. Okay, so people, yeah, right? The main sentence is researchers have shown that people individuals, whatever you want to call them, blah, 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 modifier, make hand motions, and that they will gesture. That's the main sentence. Your smiley face, 
if this makes sense. Like those two things are of equal priority. They have to be, otherwise they could not be parallel. So that's the core sentence. The rest of it is modifiers, meaning, I mean, obviously you need the modifiers. I mean, you can't just say people because we are only talking about people who have been blind from birth. But in terms of determining what the core sentence is, you don't need to think about the modifiers. So, but the core sentence has to be constructed like this. If it isn't, it's incorrect. So let's talk about that. Because remember, you got to figure this out in step one. This, you need to figure this out before you go to the choices. So now let's go to choices with that in mind. And sorry. Okay. Let's look for this in the choices. Choice A says that researchers have shown, research has shown that people make hand motions and that they will gesture. That works. Choice B says researchers have shown that individuals Is this individuals make hand motion? Is this constructed correctly? It's actually an issue with what it's the opposite kind of issue. There's something there that shouldn't be there that makes it wrong. But consider the way that this works, this blue modifier. I mean, smiley face, if you see, it's broken up across the underline and non-underline, which makes it a little harder to see. But smiley face, if you see how that blue modifier works, like the, the grammar exclusive of it is individuals nonetheless make hand motions. That's not parallel to have never seen anyone gesture. This is a description of individuals. So the problem with the way that B is constructed, and it doesn't change anything if you put a they there. B is a modifier all the way up to there. Because B mistakenly has that in parallel to this. That's totally the wrong construction. Because one of those is supposed to be a modifier where I have these three dots. And the other one is supposed to be the main verb. So B is constructed in a way that not only are these paired together when they shouldn't be, but that makes B not a sentence. Because you have researcher, researcher has shown that individuals, comma, and that they will gesture. Whoops, that doesn't make any sense. Like this is, not only does it put the wrong things in parallel to the wrong things, but it is not even a sentence. Give me a smiley face if that makes sense. Then you got C, you've got the same problem. C was actually a very popular choice with this group. A lot of you guys picked it. But researchers have shown that individuals, comma, that they do something. Like, I don't know what you would call that, but that's definitely, you can't make a sentence like that. You can't say research has shown that people, comma, that they do something. That's not a thing. You know, if I write it and have you look at it, it might be more obvious. Research has shown that people, 
comma that they. This is not a thing. In fact, I mean, this is like saying people, comma, that they, and calling that a sentence. That is definitely a non sentence. Give me a smiley if that makes sense. Yeah, hoping for more smileys than that. If you're at the beginning of the alphabet, especially, smiley face, if that makes sense. All right, that's better. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them. D's got the same problem as B does. This is supposed to be the end of the modifier here, but it isn't because but you're you're mistakenly making this entire thing into a modifier. And even if you think the modifier ends here, you still have trouble with it because I don't know what a prep phrase means. So maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know the terminology, man. I'm sorry. But you don't need to know it either. And maybe that's the reason it's trouble, if it's trouble. I mean, this is, C is not a sentence at all. So if you should not have to minutely break down grammar to see that. I mean, you, you, have, you have a sentence that needs to be written like this, and it isn't. So that is a very big deal. That's not a micromanaging grammar type of deal. But just remember that grammar terms are not your friend. If you are focusing on stuff like that, then it's going to be a whole world of unnecessary trouble on these problems. Hopefully that helps. This, this makes sense. Smiling face. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, D is a, D's got the same problem as B does. I mean, again, there's, there's no place for, and I think, Jane, your question is going to be addressed by this too. There's no place for but here. I mean, research has shown that people make hand motions. You can't put a but there because there's nothing for but to connect. I mean, you have individuals, modifier, make hand motions. So make hand motions is not connected to anything before it. So if you say, but they make hand motions, then you have nonsense. Because the parallel structure is between this and the thing after it, not the thing before it. So, I mean, again, this is why you have to figure this out in step one. I mean, you need to look at the original and say, the way I have to make the sentence is this. This is totally a reasonable thing. Like, in fact, if you, if you cannot make this template, that means you don't understand the sentence. You can feel free to take a long time to do it, because that's going to be time well spent. But you need to figure this out. You need to figure out at least this much of the structure before you even look at the choices. It is a very, very big deal. If you do that, then you will you will literally immediately be able to eliminate the two choices that have a but in them. Because there is definitely nowhere to put but in this part. You just it just doesn't make any sense if you try to put it there. And if you have done this, you will spend like two seconds figuring that out. If you haven't done this, then in retrospect, there's a lot of processing. So step one, guys, it matters a lot. And I know I mentioned this in the other class, and I pretty much mention this every time we do sentence correction in these workshops. But you need to spend the majority of the time on step one. Like you need to, you need to spend like 70, 75, 80 percent of the time looking at the original sentence, and about 20 to 30 percent of the time looking at all the choices. If you are spending most of the time looking at the choices, you are doing this wrong. 
means that you're not figuring out enough stuff about the original sentence, which means that if you don't, then the choices are going to be a world of trouble that doesn't need to be trouble. Your smiling face bell makes sense. No, guessing is not better. It's better to do what you should do, which is to figure this all out before you look at the choices. Like basically, if there are any relationships that are not 100% clear, don't look at the choices yet. I mean, you can you can definitely figure this out. There's no such thing as I can't figure that out. That that's not a thing. If you, I mean, because there's nothing super difficult or complicated about the meanings of the sentences. So like if you say that you can't figure that out, I can tell you exactly what that means, which is that you are thinking about grammar during step one. Don't do it. I mean, just, just pretend that you're reading an email from somebody, and then you will definitely be able to figure it out, I promise you. So don't think about grammar, don't think about structure, don't think about any of that. Just read the sentence and think about what they're telling you. If your mind is not polluted with all this academic weirdo structure grammar stuff, you will totally understand it, I promise you. Okay. Um, e does this okay, like A. E is, e is written like this. Now there's one more thing here too, which is, remember this idiom? Where is the idiom at? No, not there. Okay, this as much as, as much has to go with as. Put that up on the board real quick. I mean, there's no as much than happening here, but there's still an as much. In this case, it's as frequently same sort of thing. Let me white out the appropriate things. Just to say. Okay. I mean, as much is not, this is not just for as much. This is also for as frequently and as any other adverb. So if you as frequently as, same sort of thing. And more generally speaking, as adjective or adverb. These things are all the same structure. The reason you would look at that is, well, you want to look at anything that's different, but this is something that is prescriptive and it is very basic and fundamental. Like you know that as blah 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 has to go with another as. So if you look at the way that is done, like A does that, as frequently that cited people do, nope, can't have as frequently that something. As frequently as, okay, that's fine. Should probably just be highlighting that part. D has as frequently that. And E has as frequently that. So B and D and E are incorrect. And again, if, if you have two parts that go with different words like this, then you have to have both words. Like if you say as much or more than, that's incorrect. You would have to write as much as or more than. You would have to have both of those connected words, unless they're the same. So this works, this works, the other three do not work. And, and again, the, the, if you, um, it's hard to see that it, Remember the over the overarching goal here is to always focus on exactly one issue at a time. If you are doing that, then this looks like a small thing, but it's 
if you're comparing only those parts of the sentences, then it's not a small thing. It's a very big deal. And even though these are short words, you know how it works. I mean, you know that it's as much as. You, you definitely know that. So it's just a matter of noticing that this word changes and then focusing on it. And as I mentioned before, that is 90% of what makes sentence correction hard. So if you didn't see that, then the, this nobody is going to miss that part because they don't know this. You guys all know this structure. You're going to miss that part because you're not ignoring literally everything else when you come across it. That's how you got to do it. You have to, I'm going to, only going to pay attention to this one issue and everything else. Nope, not going to pay attention to it. Me smiling face. Does that make sense? All right. Very cool. Time goes by very quickly. That is, it's the end of the session. So let's kill it. I do believe that the next session is in two weeks, and it's going to be every two weeks for a while. But just go ahead and check the website to make sure that is actually true. Should be at the same time for a while, too. Um, Going to kill the recording. Thank you. February 2nd. Yeah, that sounds right. So it's two weeks from today. Should be the same time. I, I am not the one who posts the videos. Our tech support department does that. So I know they try to do it by the, the following week. So, I mean, I, the session would normally be posted by next Monday. Sometimes they get overwhelmed with more pressing stuff and then it gets delayed a little bit. But they'll show up. I mean, you could always, this is the email for tech support. If you don't see it after, give them a week or two to post it. If you don't see the recordings after that, then go ahead and write them an email. But ah, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate that. Um, cool. I'm going to kill the recording here.